This is Questions of Courage, a podcast from the youth section at the Goetheanum, hosted by Nathaniel Williams. Welcome to Questions of Courage. Today I'd like to talk about digital technology and spirituality, and I'd like to do so because this is a question which has become a focus for the year at the youth section. This summer, um, 2023, we hosted about 45 section members from around the world that are hosting and pursuing youth work, youth groups, um, particularly exploring anthroposophy. And we surveyed those who came and asked them when they look forward, what areas of life, what questions do they feel like are going to be the central questions for their generation? And that was one of many questions. And the answer to that question really was uniform with everyone who responded, even though they responded in different ways. Everyone responded that digital technology had something to do with this central concern. And what we did is we decided this year to dedicate our work, to dedicate our collaboration to this theme, to develop a deeper understanding of digital technology. And part of that involves our hosting a conference at the Goethe Anum in February. You can find out about this conference, details about the program on our website, Today, I'd like to lift out one area of questions which are going to be explored at the event, which have to do with art. And it's a very small part of the program, but just right for an episode of Questions of Courage. And I'd like to start with an imagination that's connected to recent developments in technology. Uh, Over the last year, thousands of satellites have been launched into orbit. And these satellites are connected to creating a kind of infrastructure for internet access around the world. When we look up at the night sky, it's easy to perceive them without telescopes. They are gracefully wandering stars, light spots moving across the night sky. And astronomers around the world have protested the launch of the satellites and the intended launch of thousands more because of the light pollution and how they make it more difficult to see the constellations and to explore um, the cosmic spaces with telescopes. And yet there is an intention to continue to launch these satellites into orbit of the Earth in order to build up this infrastructure for our smartphones and computers and digital um, um, networks. Now, one striking element of this picture is that the night sky is increasingly coming into movement. One of the characteristic impressions of the night sky is looking up to see all of these beautiful, luminous points of light shining in different constellations, making different shapes, and holding their form, not moving and not changing. And this is connected with certain qualities and feelings that have been described by different people for centuries, millennia. And now we're at this, we're having this really interesting moment where our technologies are actually transforming the vision of the night sky for our naked eye in the direction of dynamism and mobility. And interestingly enough, it's not only turning the night sky into this dynamic moving uh, picture, but our daily lives are becoming more and more dynamic because of the technologies themselves. If you just think about normal perception and how much movement and how many impressions you have without the use of, say, your smartphone or your computer, and then compare it to 
within five minutes or an hour of spending time on your smartphone, how much movement, how many different impressions, how many different connections around the world can be made. We see that this picture of bringing the night sky into movement is also happening in our daily perception through our use of technology. More and more mobility, more and more dynamism um, of perception and connected with a certain kind of excitement and acceleration. But we know even uh, the most basic and um, sociological research uh, makes clear that all of these connections don't necessarily translate into a feeling of being connected and that often enough these abilities to move quickly with messages or um, images or um, what have you, some kind of communication between space with digital technology does not leave us feeling connected. Instead, it can leave us mysteriously enough feeling disconnected and lonely. And this is a great paradox somehow in this development. So we have this increase of movement in the sky and in our lives with our use of all of these technologies, and yet somewhere there's a kind of static, dead stillness, a kind of void or something, a feeling of loneliness that we are aware of. And indeed, when we compare being in the presence of a machine to being in the presence of another human being, how rich is the difference? And in one way, it's quite intuitive that even with all of the amazing possibilities that have already been opened up through digital technology, that in some regard, this feeling of loneliness in it is an inherent feature of it. Because in the end, digital technology is a kind of automation, a kind of hyper uh, automated system. Now, this picture, if we grasp it together, we can see that there's a great growth of outer movement and it's accompanied by a kind of tendency towards isolation in one regard. And I know this is a one-sided description or one perspective, and I've chosen it for a reason, so I hope you'll bear with me. There's another development which is intimately connected with the youth section and with the Goethe Anum, and it's a kind of mirror image in a way, but qualitatively speaking. Instead of starting with outer movement um, and ending with a kind of stillness and a vacuum, it has to do with beginning with a kind of stillness that we create through our own will, through engaging with our will and with our heart, our thinking, through meditation, and through active grasping of our thought, which usually is very distracted and going in all directions. And we grasp our thought, and we pour our will into it. We bring it to a kind of compact, still meditative awareness. And we discover, we can discover, an amazing spiritual creative plane of movement. And it is a plane of warmth, of creativity and vitality. And it is not devoid of ethical qualities and moral qualities. And it is somehow connected, we feel, to our heart as if there's a thinking connected to our hearts and also to the experience of being human. So in a way, I feel like I can describe also within the work of the youth section and members all around the world, these two directions are being experienced. One where an outer movement tends towards a kind of stillness and loneliness, and the other one where a kind of stillness and concentration leads into a kind of spiritual movement. And these two gestures are experienced as complementary. To be able to turn one's attention and also one's heart towards this plane of creative spiritual life can be felt as a kind of balancing gesture 
to live in the techno modern world that we all are participating in and contributing to. Somehow it feels like there's a kind of wholeness in this development and that it's important to be able to develop this connection to the spiritual, especially today with this development of digital technologies. Now, what I've just touched on actually in some ways was already mapped out in a contour in an amazing way by Rudolf Steiner a hundred years ago. And he described this development quite lucidly in a book that is published as Leading Thoughts. Excerpts from Leading Thoughts, by the way, are the backdrop study for members around the world who are helping to prepare for the conference that will be here at the Goethe Annam in February. Now, I'd like to now turn towards two of the parts of the program and preparations for this event in February in relationship to this imagination. And first of all, I'd like to speak about um, something which in the history of art has sometimes been called visual music. And it's certainly a century old and you could make arguments even older. And there is a book which I'm going to provide the title in the show notes that you can look up if you'd like a really interesting uh, documented history of some of the major contributors to visual music over the last hundred years. And a lot of pictures in this book great book. And in essence, um, visual music has to do with artists trying to create instruments where you can play moving color light and um, in a way similar to playing, for instance, a violin or a piano or a harp or a um, musical instrument. And one of the most famous uh, contributors to this concept was an artist named Thomas Wilfred. And you can actually see some videos of his color organ recitals or performances, I think easily enough, um, online today. Now, but what is the impetus to explore visual music in the context of this theme, digital technology and spirituality. I've already touched on it because in describing these two developments, um, one from outer movement into a kind of loneliness or void and the other one through an inner stillness into a kind of spiritual movement, I've kind of tried to describe the wings of a balance experience, I think, in modern life, where in order to be balanced in a techno modern world, we actually have to develop a complementary movement spiritually. And yet that doesn't mean we all have to simply develop meditative practices because there are other ways for this spiritual creative plane to be made present and to have influences and effects in daily life. And one of them that has been suggested already a hundred years ago by Rudolf Steiner would be to develop instruments whereby you could play light and color through intuitive use of your hands and your movements as an artist and project them on a screen. So not a mechanized way of playing moving colored pictures and light forms, but instead a kind of free intuitive instrument where you could, for instance, take a yellow, irradiated yellow with different forms and turn it in, for instance, into red or blue, and that corresponding forms were at your disposal as an artist so that it wasn't really an automated machine, but much more connected to the human spirit and the human will and the human feeling and um, creativity. And he suggested that this would be a way to counteract or complement some of the negative influences 
that um, screen culture and automated screen culture particularly would bring with them. He was working on this with an artist named Jan Stutten, and there is a small book I'll also include in the show notes if you'd like to look it up, which is only in German, which describes some about this project, which never really came to fruition. Well, over the last years, this has been something that I found tremendously interesting, and I've developed some very simple instruments, prototypes of what you could say would be suggested by um, Steiner and um, aimed at in one way by Jan Stutten. And I'm working with a musician, um, a few musicians and singers. Jakob Bergsma is particularly helping me. And we want to actually create a kind of demonstration of this instrument in an artistic way at this event. Also, as an example of future directions of screen culture. Now, this isn't intended to replace the screen culture that is already out there, but more a kind of imagination of a complementary art form, which could, in a way, help us maintain some balance in our modern lives and modern world. And really the experience of playing these instruments and also of watching the performances is such that it is the case that there is more permeability and presence of this plane of kind of creative spiritual life that I have already referred to through these kinds of instruments as opposed to automated digital uh, movies, streaming of Netflix, or going into the cinema, which we all know very well. Now, I put that forward as a kind of description of my own experience and also my own intentions, and I'd like to invite uh, everyone who's interested in these themes to come in February and to be part of the conversation, but most importantly, also to have their own experience of some of what has been developed. There's another artist who's going to be at the event, who is Omer, Omer Elam. And he published a piece in the Goethe Anum, which is the weekly um, newsletter of um, the Goethe Anum. And I would like to quote a passage from this article and talk a little bit about the questions that he's working with as a musician who is coming into his craft and his work in the digital era, indeed has studied digital composition. The article is called On Earthly and Cosmic Music, and it was published in November of 2023. And I'll provide a link in the show notes to this as well. But one of the things that he describes in this article is how he experienced a kind of desire and interest in exploring these different levels of experience in relationship to electronic music and electronic um, synthesizers, for instance, and how they were connected to the spirit and how they were connected to spirituality. At the end of his article, he writes, the question that is important, quote, is electronic music healthy and spiritual is maybe not the right question, but rather, how can we spiritualize electronic music? And he suggests that through attentive concentration and love, quote, we can both spiritualize the earthly and embody the cosmic using digital instruments, so to say. Now, I'm sure that people will have very different experiences and also ideas about what this might mean and if this might be possible. Be that as it may, a part of the conference will be include the possibility of hearing some of these con contributions and having some conversation around them. And you're heartily invited to also be part of that. Um, in the conference, there's many other things that are taking place, including many traditional lectures um, on the theme. And again, you can find a detailed program on the website. 
which I encourage you to take a look at. And this is an ongoing work. Of course, we will only scratch the surface, but we hope that this scratch will be significant and especially will be founded on our own experience and sincere interest in trying to understand digital technology always in connection to the spiritual in the human being and also the spiritual in the greater world. And if you are not necessarily able to come, um, but you know someone who might be interested, I hope you'll spread the word. And there will be certainly more opportunities to take this work further in the future. The conference again is at the Goethe Annum in Switzerland, February 1st to 4th, and more details are on our website. Questions of Courage is a collaboration between the youth section and the Goethe Annum communications team, Goethe Annum TV and the weekly periodical. And the Goethe Annum is not supported by tax revenue. It is not supported by um, some single endowment or wealthy donor. It has been supported and is supported primarily by a huge amount of people who are interested in the work through programming income, but also a lot of gifts. And I invite you to make a contribution to support youth work and the youth section work, particularly if you appreciate these videos and um, podcasts. You can imagine that your donation will not go towards a lot of production costs, but they will almost entirely go towards working with young people. Thank you so much. Until next time.